This training video is going to talk about the TDFM 136 radio shown here. This is uh, installed in uh, CAP aircraft and it's the uh, COM3 radio that's used to communicate uh, from the aircraft to either other aircraft or to uh, mission base or air to ground. Let's talk briefly about the knobs and the switches here because they're important to understand uh, what, what they do. You don't have to know uh, how to use everything here on the keypad. Uh, there's some shortcuts that I'll show here in a minute. Um, these two knobs here, they're the volume knobs for main, which is the frequency that's uh, up here on top. And this one is the volume knob for garb. Uh, guard which is down here on the bottom. This knob here also is the on off knob. It's important that the radio be turned on with this. So one of the first things you ought to do before shutting the aircraft down is to turn this radio off with this knob. Uh, there have been reports of corruption in the uh, database inside the radio from transits uh, on the uh, bus from just using the mission master to turn this radio on and off. And subsequently, when starting the airplane, one of the last things you want to do is to turn this radio on with the knob. This uh, radio is old enough that uh, the knob is actually a twisty, where you twist it all the way counterclockwise to turn it off, and twist it clockwise to turn it on. Newer radios have an actual push button where this knob is used uh, to turn it on and off by just pressing uh, the button. Over here is the uh, squelch. Uh, you can push that to break the squelch. Uh, that give you an indication of uh, where the volume is set uh, and bring in weak signals. There's two switches down here. Uh, one's labeled MN for main and GD for guard. This switch is G1 and G2. This switch over here, if you have it selected an MN, when you transmit on COM3, you will be talking on the main frequency at the top of the radio here. If you flip that switch to guard, now when you transmit on COM3, you'll actually be transmitting on the bottom frequency. In this case, it's set to guard 1. This other switch right next to it is the G1, G2. You can switch between guard 1 and guard 2 by flipping this switch either in the up or down direction. This third switch over here is the power. You should always start on low power, transmit on the lowest possible power. If you need high, flip that switch up and the radio then will transmit on high power. Now let's spend a second talking about a configuration that you ought to look for. Um, a lot of times things will get moved around and messed with. So if you want to start out in what I call a standard configuration for this radio, make sure that when you finally get this radio turned on, that these volume knobs are pointing at 12 o'clock. This switch is selecting main, the top frequency that you're going to transmit on, and the guard is set to G1 and your power is set to low. In this configuration right here you've got the best chance of being able to transmit and receive on this radio without any problems. Now I want to take just a brief second to talk about a control panel in this airplane it's located down here. This is 717 Charlie Papa um, I did a video a while back on 706 Charlie Papa. It turns out that that uh, panel was in a slightly different location. It was up 
up here as opposed to down here but they're usually in roughly the same spot this panel down here is really critical to understand what this does this panel down here is used for two things the right push button here is used to select between uh, the FM radio the VHF FM which is um, the standard radios that we were just talking about if you press that in it switches to UHF now UHF is a radio that is uh, not installed in cap aircraft at this time having this button depressed into the UHF mode like this will cause problems with your COM3 communications since there's not a UHF radio installed you basically will lose your COM3 communications let's come up here with that button pressed and let's try to transmit if you look over here this R should change to a T nothing if I come back down here and I select this back to FM and now come up to here you'll see that that R changes to a T very important this is also a standard configuration that you ought to be aware of both of these buttons need to be depressed I'm sorry they need to not be pressed they need to be out I'll talk about this button in a second this switch over here is used to uh, make the backlighting on these switches either dim or bright in the bright mode you can obviously read them very well this button right here on the left is the seat select for COM3 you can see there's a number two right here number two seat in the airplane is the co-pilot seat with this button not depressed like it is right here selecting seat two the co-pilot has the control to be able to transmit on the cap radio the other thing selected on the audio panel here for the co-pilot is COM3. So COM3 depressed here, selected, and make sure this button is not depressed. Make sure it's in seat two selection. You can now transmit from the co-pilot seat. Now in the back of the airplanes behind the pilot, there's a button and this button back here is the seat number three transmit button. If you come down to this control panel and you depress number three, now control for transmitting from the co-pilot audio panel is going to be from the back seat. If you watch that R, you can see it changes to a T. I'm depressing the button on the seat behind the pilot. Now this not only impacts the cap radio, it impacts whatever you have selected up in the co-pilot audio panel. If you uh, were to press COM2, which is 122775 and now come back here in the back seat the back seat person in seat 3 can now transmit on COM2 and it works the same for COM1 if you were to have COM1 selected keep in mind that button is selected and shows a three down there. The co-pilot cannot transmit on any of the radios from the co-pilot seat using the push to talk button. 
so many times that button down there gets accidentally pressed selecting C3 and basically disabling the audio panel for the co-pilot. Now let's talk briefly here about changing channels. In the three ring binder that should be in the airplane, towards the back there's a couple sheets that have all of the cap frequencies and repeater channel numbers uh, that that the cap uh, uses and that this radio has programmed in it. For instance, just to walk you through a couple quick channels here. Right now we're in channel one and it's CC1. Very common uh, air to air or simplex uh, frequency. If somebody says go to R27, if you were to look in the book, uh, one of the channel numbers for R27 is channel 37. Now you can use the 6 button here to scroll up. You can see how this number is changing as I hit the 6. Or you can press channel 0, 3, 7, enter. And the radio goes to channel 37, which is R27 repeater. Now, if you wanted to go back down, back to CC1, you can press the four and, and sequence down. You can see how it's changing. Or you can press channel zero, zero, one, enter. It's always a three digit number that you press in there, even if it's a single digit channel number. So, keep in mind, standard configuration, volume knobs up, transmitting on main, guard one, low power. Down in this audio panel down here, both of these buttons should not be depressed. They ought to be in the out position. As far as the dim switch, you can have that wherever you want it. Now this is marked fairly well, this one here. It actually says FM, says 2, and you press it, it goes to 3. You press that, it goes to UHF. Not all of the uh, control panels in some of the older aircraft are labeled as well as this one is. So make sure that these are not depressed. Both volumes are straight up and down. Transmitting on main, monitoring G1 or guard one, low power. Now, again, I'm gonna repeat this again. What's really important with this radio, what we're finding is that some radios are getting damaged and databases are getting corrupted, we believe by uh, an electrical, um, pulses on the bus from turning the mission master on and off with the radio already turned on. The recommendation is to turn the radio on and off with the knob on the radio. Then you can turn mission master off and then continue with your securing the aircraft procedure.